neighborhoods of the neighborhood facts over feelings the podcast brand new episode i believe it's number six or seven i was told it doesn't matter for my producing producer so uh i want to welcome our guest she's um quite familiar to a lot of people who are t- tuned into the la hip-hop scene of la um on the west coast recently and she might not be that familiar to some but I want to give a warm welcome to none other than Neighborhood Lupe. What it do, Lady Lupe? Neighborhood, bro. You already know what time it is, man. Neighborhood. So, um, so pleased to have you here. It's been almost a couple years of us networking, grinding, yeah. hitting and missing, crossing paths, politicking, ups, yeah. downs, and we finally here together. So I want to say welcome. And before we get started, for those that don't know, um, Lupe is like a, a right-hand sidekick. Um, Ace Kum Boom, caretaker, friend of the notorious famous uh, Crip Mac, Five Five Crip, who has become an internet sensation over the last couple of years. And while he's been publicly going through his journey, everyone's familiar with him, pretty much knows Lupe has been for the most part right there in his corner supporting him. From the time I first met his acquaintance, she was there. She was very assistive in the things that you've seen him do as far as keep um, himself on track with handling business. We all know he's not a historically um, sound, savvy business person, but Lupe is one of the people that is learning alongside him, helping him stay on the right path. She's out there with him with the charity drives. Appreciate all that. Um, we know c Mac has just gotten into some recent legal issues, and I wanna know if you mind giving us an update on that. Well, um, you know, c Mac got caught with a, a Billy Western, so, uh the last time he went to court, uh, he had violated his probation, so they kept him in there. And um, he took the deal recently, which is two years with the half, so mm. he's going to do one year. He has 150 days credit. So I'm thinking, I'm hoping he comes out in December, but the the lawyer said, uh, Rosenberg, he said he's going to come out in like in February. Shout or, out to Rosenberg. Yeah, shout out to Rosenberg, bro. Um, well, that's you know what? We hate to hear that the homie lock, free to loke. But when you look at the um, overall situation, it could be a lot worse than two years. Yeah. You know how he moved, rather get caught with it than without it, especially when you're such a popular face that um, has a whole lot of potential energy that may come from you from um, different ways. So what is the plan on, as far as his personality, why he's gone? Do you guys have a, a plan in place or how you gonna keep him momentum or is it basically just gonna be like a timeout till he get back? Uh-huh. Well, what I'm doing right now is I've been like posting his videos every day that I have. I have so much content. That's unreleased. Yeah, I just have content with him, you that, know, every day. That we yet to see. Yeah, that you already just had. I have some that's good that that gets numbers, and then I repost that. Okay. And then I have some that have people haven't seen, so I'm gonna try to put that out. I have a lot with you too. When when we did that podcast, I have so many pictures. Is that right? I need to see some of them, man. If I could. Yes. Yeah, I would like to. Every time I post it on on TikTok, it goes viral. Every time I post it. So as I described you, I described you as his homie, his friend. Yeah. Uh, I didn't use any official terms like manager or handler. Like, what is the actual dynamic between you and Cuz? How did you guys find yourself being such a tandem, a two a two piece, a pair? I, what yeah. is it? It's because we don't have no titles. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I'm I'm really his home girl. That's right. So, you know, since he put me where I'm at, like, if he needs, like, like I'm not going to change because he got a new management team and stuff because right. they, they can't deal with him the way I can. You know what All I'm right. saying? As a, as a friend, as we're more like family. So, like, I fuck with his family. They love me, you know. Okay. We got that report with him. I know him. You know what I'm saying? So right. I know how to deal with him. Like, everybody can't deal with C. Yeah, he's, he's very unique. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I can sense that you have a report with him that many – are unable to develop. Yeah. He trusts you. Yeah, he trusts me. He trusts you. I trust him too. That's good. That's very important. I want to applaud you for that because C Mac needs somebody like that in his corner at all yeah. times because things are going to be up and down. People are going to come and go, but he needs somebody from day uno that's always there that yeah. he's got the question. So I want to applaud you for being that for okay. him. Thank you. I think it's interesting you shared a little uh, music with me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hit your loop bag. Hit your loop bag. You already know, bro. I mean, are you? Is that something you want to take serious? Having your voice on wax? Is it something you were just doing to have fun? I know to hit the loop bag was something like the homie giving you a tribute. Yeah, yeah. You know so. what I'm saying? So I, I don't know. I, I guess uh, people like that song. So I did a, this song that I did is for C Mac. It's 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 all about him. Like it's about big booty stitches. That's all he talks about, bro. I swear <laughs> to God, that's booty all, beautiful stitches. That's all we be talking about, and it be funny. He's so funny, bro. Like you know, I'm really like like 
we get in the car and all we do is talk, you know, and that's majority of the Boy, conversation. Done. That's all. <laughs> yeah, I, I really was flattered by the fact that he used beautiful so much in this conversation. <laughs> I know he kind of stayed away from it after I fell back, but I it was the know. big booty, beautiful sisters <laughs> that I saw him on the internet with yeah. going a little extra. And it wasn't the fact that I saw him, because I'm more familiar with his character and I can understand what he was doing. However, um, a couple of days before me becoming aware of that clip, my 18 year old daughter had like expressed some like interest in his personality because mm -hmm. he was blowing up on the internet. He was yeah. funny, she liked it. And then I happened to be with him out there when we did the interview a couple yeah. of days. And I remember I let him FaceTime her so she yeah. could screenshot. <laughs> and she the one that brought the chicken eating out the booty to me. Like, so I'm like, ah, she like, daddy, look, look at your boy, daddy. And then like, I'm watching him already. And it wasn't that bad because he was eating the chicken like off the small of her back. <laughs> so I'm watching it and I'm almost finna stop watching. But my daughter like hold my head. She like, no, nah, watch, he with the extras. He was <laughs> so. When the chicken fell between the cheeks and he went that deeper, yeah. I'm like, ah. And I kind of like, I didn't know what path he was on with his image, but you know, I spoke to him about it and I, I see that he hasn't gone deeper in that direction, so I can appreciate that. You feel well, me? Well, he do it in the OnlyFans, bro, so you gotta pay for that. I, wait a minute. I heard, wait a minute. <laughs> I've heard about him and OnlyFans and I've heard, and I'm not sure, I you make an appearance as well? I might the recording. Just I'm, recording. I'm just telling them what you know. I'm, because I was, I'm I was cheering him on. I'm his cheerleader. <laughs> I, I, was, I was watching the clip. Was he, so he's on OnlyFans alone with the girl. Oh, with the girl. Okay. Yeah. So I was, I was looking at a clip of uh, 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 a no jumper clip, and it was a, a pretty hot female on there saying she was interested in having an experience with you. Oh me, oh Kazumi. <laughs> it was basically what she was supposed to. Be, it was supposed to be for C Mac, but. You know, he had too much sh uh, shots and she was kind of scared. Yeah, she was like, scared well, scared. I'd rather get Lupe, you know? <laughs> she seems safer. Right, I you see know? That. So that was just her being facetious, just having fun. Yeah, he scared her off uh, him, yeah. and she ran to me, bro. Right, I can feel you. That sounds like a play you and him could run all day. He chased him from running into the bar and just slide right into I the arms. Come here, baby. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> come here, I got you. Yeah, that's real play. Oh, God. It's a, we're like a tag team, bro. Yeah, I can dig it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so he's on OnlyFans. I'm not. I'm trying my hardest not to imagine any of that. Because I got an idea what OnlyFans is. And you're behind the scenes capturing it all. I'm recording it, bro. That's crazy. He doesn't... <laughs> so is he getting his increments off that? He increments. We were. We were, we were. So now every time, the, all that money that I get now, I just send it to him. That's right. Keep them books fat. Yeah, it's for his books. That's yeah, I don't right. even touch it. Because, you right. know, I already told him that. You know what I'm saying? Until he comes out. That's right. Get that money. That's real. You know, and I'm not. You know, I'm. I work. You Doing know what your saying? thing. That's yeah. right. That's right. You know. Do you, are you affiliated with any other artists in the sense that the way you were affiliated with him was that more yeah, of a personal more, thing? I got, you got more artists. artists. Yeah. You mind give shouting a few of them well, out? I got. I got uh, Killer. Killer. From he's he's from Six O, but he's my artist, bro. Neighborhood. Neighborhood, bro. And then I also got uh with the Risk Takers. Oh, that's tiny, a group. Tiny Gun. Okay. The Gutter and Day Day. Okay, they from out here too. Yeah, they from out here. They affiliated yeah. or, or not? Nah? Yeah. Oh yeah. So you fuck with well, all well, all your <laughs> artists is gang affiliated. <laughs> <laughs> They're all felons. They all felons. I'm gonna make sure I'm straight. No, I want, but you know what it is. What it is don't it? matter what where you come from, That's but right. you know, in the hood, a lot of people are so gifted. Like a lot of people mm. are is lost talent in the hood, bro. From mm. just from sports to singing, anything, bro. And I feel like it, you know they don't get a you know it's the streets, it's the trenches, like. They don't got the same opportunity as some other people right. got. Like they don't got to, like a mom or a dad that's gonna pay for it. You know they gotta get camps. They gotta do extra things to make something it. to fall back yeah. on if it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah I agree. Do, they don't have that, so they have this talent, but they don't really have the, the resources and help to make it where they need to be. So you see yourself as somewhat a person that can help establish that connection for the talent and yeah, the opportunities. Yeah, in the hood, yeah. Because it's not just rapping, it's I other things, you know what I'm saying? I can salute that. I can salute that. I swear that. to God, a lot of my homies are so talented and because where they where we come from or how they grew up, the, the, they might have been locked up for years, bro. Speaking on that, just in general, because mm -hmm. I'm sure you've spoken on it on other platforms, but can you kind of explain the dynamic of being a Latina but being a Crip and really fucking with my people to the point where you accept it, even though you got the accent mm -hmm. it's not like you turned all the way black but oh, no. you are loke and you yeah. still part of your people can you kind of because it kind of leads into what i want to discuss up next which mm -hmm. is a current thing that's happening with 
our people, even though yeah. both sides are your people, definitely. Yeah, but people. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We're our yeah. people in the public. But can you kind of explain the dynamic of, of, of being someone who has coexisted in both cultures and you, you understand both sides and explain how you ended up being on our side of the gangs versus your racial side? Well, you know, I grew up in Compton with the Mexican, you know, oh, with the Mexican. With the Semos? The, the, the CGs, but Semos was over there shooting okay. up the house. Okay. Well, we ain't going to talk about that, but you know. All right, say yes, go ahead. <laughs> but I understand how in the back, in the past, Compton, Watts, Mexicans, Blacks coexisted so well that where it could be that way easy, mm-hmm. but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because so, there's some um, Mexican people in the Black. And Correct, yeah. Some Black people in the Mexican. Right, it crossed over. Yeah, so it, it's But usually like, when you find a Mexican crib, that lingo is gone. Like, you still sound like, <laughs> you feel me? You sound straight like. My kids sound like me too, and they're mixed, bro. They're like, they don't, know, they don't know English, they don't know Spanish, so, but they sound like with the accent right. I got. And I'm like, I didn't learn English till I went, I was in the uh, kindergarten. For real? So I'm, I, I was born here, I just didn't know it. Right, right. Because so at home it was all Spanish. All Spanish since I. So with still, all that being said, still, I want to get to the fact, how did you get to the crip side? I don't know. I just when I came to the hood, it it just it just I felt like welcome. Mm. You know, I'm like a person. I was like kind of sheltered growing up. Mm. So even though I grew up in the in the Mexican gang, I didn't I didn't hang out right there. Mm. I didn't start hanging out till I went to the hood. So you could kind of like be outside of your protective element. People who gonna tell you not don't do it, mm-hmm. and some people who just accept you for who you are, and you mm-hmm. got comfortable yeah. fucking around. And then it was like I was always been the same. Like they, that's who I am. This is who I am. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to like, you know, in the streets, just times in life, every now and then, it's mm-hmm. black versus brown. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been challenged with how do you position yourself in those type get, of moments? I get challenged more now. I I got into a fight with with the I got jumped by a Mexican gang, but it's like just because you was a crip. Well, no, because they they be trying to fight me, and then you know you get outnumbered. Mm. And but what was the what was the issue? Just because because they don't they don't like you rocking with blacks. Yeah, I think oh, that's right. what it was too. You know what I'm saying? Right. So they know I just came for a party with my cousin. You know what mm. I'm saying? So they already know. My kids is they already know the whole get down. Right. I grew up over there. Right. So I didn't think you know it's always the closest people to you. It's never no strangers, bro. And that's the crazy shit. It's like it's never no option. Nothing. You know what I'm saying? That be doing you sometimes right. really dirty. Right. You know what I'm saying? You expect it, but it's not. Is right. your people's like now I get the backlash now? Oh, you, you don't, you don't mess with the raza. Da, 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 da. I'm like, well, that's not who I is around me, bro. Like, mm. I mean, what do you want me to do? Right. Like, right. If, I, if a if a Mexican happens to be around me, like I put a, put one in, in my song because I fuck with Frank Nitty. Okay. You know shout out saying? to him. Frank, I don't know who that is really, but oh, shout Frank out to Nitty. him. I, I Keep popping. Yeah, I make Frank Nitty through uh, Bone Thugs. Okay, shout out to Bone Thugs. Bone I know thugs. a couple of them cats. Yeah, I used to go backstage with them, and that's how I met Frank Nitty. He has artists, but all his artists are Mexican. Oh, okay. He's I mixed. Oh, okay. But he has a studio and everything, bro. But he pushed for the for the raza. For the raza, okay. yeah, bro. So like Respect. you know, that's that's how I met. That's how I got. I I connected again with him when I went to the. The show with corrupt. Oh, okay, shout out Young Gotti. Yeah, I'm I'm Lupe Gotti. Like what? Are you Lupe Gotti? Yeah, he gave. I'm, he's Young Gotti. <laughs> hey, I'm Lupe Gotti. I'm gonna tell you something. That's how I, I I was gonna tell you. You know, corrupt fuck with you if he throw Gotti on your name because yeah. he got a whole bunch of Gotti's. Like yeah. whoever you was, <laughs> you Gotti. It's Gotti gang. I'm you know Gotti what gang, said? bro. You already yeah. know Gotti way or no way. Oh, you already my, know what my, time my, it my, is, my. bro. Hey, that, that he be kinda... calling me, be like. He be letting me know, like you got you got to be a certain way now. You can't, you know. Oh, he putting you on your screen. Yes, because he's like, you know, there's certain things I can't post no more. Like mm. before, I used to post whatever. Like I was like, see, my fuck it, you know. Oh no, we not. No filter. <laughs> no, you gotta. Filter. Now I filter it because he be like, he be on my head, bro. He's, I'm, I'm, I'm a gaudy now, so I can't, be, I can't post certain things, you know, that's out of respect for the for for the gaudy gang, you know. Gaudy gang, that's what's happening, yeah, man. You know, that's what's doing. We're Tell- we're a gang within the gang. I can respect it. I get it. Subsection. Yeah. Subsection. <laughs> it gets, it, I, I really was eager to get your thoughts on this since we're talking about being bicultural. Right now in the headlines is a very controversial situation where it seemed Tiger did a song called I Could Umbel, or I Could Umbel, or something like that. I know it's a Spanish word that I've heard all my life. I'm not familiar with what it means, but apparently he received some backlash um, at the height of the opposite side of the controversy is an individual by the name, I believe, American Cholo. Oh, yeah. And there's been some back and forth. I believe um, Tiger uh, apologized for whatever the song represented that caused the issues. I haven't actually seen the video. I know you told me you did. And I was eager to get your thoughts mm-hmm. on this whole controversy 
basically because you seen from the inside looking out of both sides. Um, you saw the video. Mm -hmm. You familiar with Tiger? You know Tiger's a dude that's yeah. comfortable wearing pastel toenail polish and Chanel yeah. sandals. Yeah. I couldn't imagine him going out his way to to just disrespect the whole Latino culture. I do not believe that was his intention. I mean, intention. He, he likes our culture. We keep singing about our culture, but you know. How do you think he found himself in this trouble? What What, what do you think went wrong? You I saw mean, the video. What do you think about the video? Just, I mean, people are just soft. Mm, sensitive. You know. You know. Sensitive. They're just soft, soft. now. It's every, you know, like they just like they find any little thing. Mm. Like, oh, that's racist. Like, you know, some people just gotta chill out, take a chill, put smoke a blunt, right? You know, relax. Because you know? what could you? You saw the video. Yeah. Is there anything that you could pinpoint that you can consider what, that was offensive? What, what would be the one thing, if anything, that you thought he could have left out or he shouldn't have did? Is there anything? I've looked at it and I really didn't see no problem with it. I don't want to get no backlash from the, that's deep. from from the rasa, bro. But I mean, you know, I, I, and then he got a lot of views, bro. You know what? I look at it like this: if I look at the rasa through my history and mm -hmm. Compton, LA, all my life yeah. from the '70s up, their whole image has changed from opposite of ours to a lot more similar. Yeah. When you see somebody who's from the rasa and they're dressed for like a street dude nowadays they dress more like we do versus than how they used to yeah. and i think you know we we, we have a style of haircut the style the fades yeah. the jades the two earrings the jewelry the even they used to fix their cars up slightly different and now it's more and i feel like we accept that um connection a lot better than i, I just know tiger's image from what i see and i, I mean, don't think he's somebody that's trying to kick off a race ride no He's not. That's why he took the video down. You know what I'm saying? Right. Apologetic. Yeah. He he apologized. You know, because a lot of people took offense to it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like me. Like I. You see, I be. I don't give a fuck, bro. <laughs> I be posting some crazy ass shit. So I didn't see right. nothing wrong with that shit, bro. So I, you know. We laugh at each other. We laugh. I mean, we laugh at each other and with each other in fun. My best friend, my broski. His name is Puto. Everybody knows <laughs> that's a disrespectful term, but it's a term of endearment for me because he has mixed heritage. And as we used to kick it and talk shit. What you call him that, bro? I call him puto, but everybody call him puto. It's, yeah, we flip that. We flip that, Crip Street. It ain't like what it sound like. She crazy. What but, you mean, everybody call him puto? Yeah, we call him puto on the set. But look, check that this out. That is funny, bro. It's, to us, it's not a Spanish word. So, what? you know what I'm saying? You can call it what it's you not, want. It's a Spanish bad word. But I know, but, but it doesn't have the same definition. But look. Because of what you're doing, this high's name is saved in my phone, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Tupo. I, I misspell it in my phone, T-U-P-O. And I give you a funny, a funny nestle. <laughs> <in the neighborhood. laughs> Tupo introduced me to this dude in, like, 2001. I didn't name him Tupo to, to Puto to long after that. She a fool. But I can recall shortly before neighborhood oh nip God, passed. Bro. Yes, it's crazy. We was kicking it with cuz, and he heard me call Puto Tupo. And he was like, what's that, the remix? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, cuz I just like, you know, when outsiders around, I don't want nobody to get the misconception of, you know, what we trying to say when we call the homie name. But cuz was like, shit, fuck that. That's what we call him. Love you, hood. Oh, my, 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 my. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, puto. That's like, that's like my dog, my puppy, my best friend, my bro. You know what I'm saying? But that's the name came up, though, from us being partners. Yeah. And you know, instead of you kicking with your homie all day, talking about how much you appreciate him, you usually talk shit. And we used to talk shit. One of my main phrases was, man, shut up, puto. He's a fucking puto just because he's has Spanish heritage. So when I diss you, I dissed you in Spanish. Yeah. And that just turned into a, I just said it so much. You the puto. You the puto. And then it just, because <laughs> a puto. And no matter how um, strong the history of the word puto is, nobody had known him. That's the last thing you gonna ever think of when you know Puto. Oh God, he's far, <laughs> Puto far from a Puto. Oh, blah, 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 blah. So <laughs> you a fool? <laughs> hey, tell me this though: Do you think Tiger did the right thing by taking the content down, or do you think he would have made a better statement by keeping it up there and explaining he didn't mean any offense? I mean, because the majority of the people was kind of upset with it. He did something that he felt to, you know, kind of redeem himself. Right. Because he ain't trying to, like, he ain't trying to, he doesn't that see us that, you know, it wasn't right. that, he wasn't trying to put that out. It was just a video, you know. I caramba, like, oh my God, like, right. you know. You know what it reminds me of? Because, only because I make this um, connection so readily, he and YG just recently did a, a video where they were both in drag. 
according like the Kardashians. Like yeah. I think they were going um, going on a heist and they went oh, yeah. disguised themselves looking like straight bitches. So they got a lot of flash um, backlash behind that. But on top of that, even further, recently YG had a record called uh, Loco, and it was like catering toward the Latin community. Mm. And the fact that him and Tiger are collaborating recently, you know, you can't spell Tiger without the YG. But anyway, um, I think it was a similar move. I think it was successful for YG in appealing to the Latin community. I think they appreciated his, but I think that was Tiger's effort to do the same thing. And I think it kind of like missed. I think it went wrong. Yeah. I have a song myself and it's called The East Side Story. But it's like, you know the Romeo Juliet story mm. about two people in love, their families didn't like it? And it's a record about me being in love with a Latin chick and how nobody like it, but me and her is all in this. I'm gonna let you hear it, but it's- Well, so, that, that kind of really happens in, in- Yeah, in real life. Mm -hmm. But it, it never actually happened to me, but I wrote the letter, the, re the record from perspective of it actually happening. It's like the Romeo and Juliet story, but it's about me being a black street dude in love with a- uh, a Latina and she in love with me, her poppy, her mommy, her brothers, nobody like it, but we, we rocking and we rolling. I'm gonna have to let you hear it. Oh yeah, I gotta oh, hear God. that. Yeah, I'm gonna do that for you. Yeah, bro. You know, it, I mean, he just, he likes our culture. If, if we got, if his record label's named Loco, come on. Right. That man, oh, who, who, who's who? You said, you said his record label, what's his record label? No, no, I said YG did a record called Loco. Oh, Loco, okay. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, go Loco, yeah. that one, yeah, yeah. I think Tiger was trying to do something similar mm. and just didn't, quite do it correct enough to where it caused controversy yeah i think that's all it was because you know what it is he, he, tiger be doing too much with all the 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 dramatics with the the clothes and the toenail polish he, he needs to he needs to tone it he needs to tone it down just, just go back to oh it. what clothes like his, just his videos it, i don't i'm not really up on his content like that i mean that video he did a lot of, it was like kind of like i don't know it was a lot of not my type of content once i saw a dude and i wasn't really into him prior to this but once i seen him like Flossing pastel toenail polish with Chanel sandals. I lose understanding of your energy as an individual, as a man. I don't understand that. Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that that sometimes they do go overboard, bro. Yeah, oh God. You know, and and then like they they're rap they're they're rappers, bro. So the music is is supposed to be kind of like kind of like raw. So when you're coming in like that, dressed like a female, mm. you know what's what I'm your, saying? What's your, what, what so? I see a lot more of that blending going on in our community versus the Latin community. And I know you don't necessarily rap, represent the Latin community from a street sense because you represent our side, but do you see a lot of that in the Latin community too, where the the, the bitch niggas coming in more, Not, being more popular? Because, you know, our, our culture, our parents, the, 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 is a lot of machista, but machismo, you know what I'm saying? What does that mean? Like, the, you know how the men are like, like solid for solid, yeah. men, men, yes. Yeah. So like they're men, like right, right, and they're right. not. They're, is they're, if they they were gonna be more in the deal, they're not gonna right. show it if they. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh, uh -huh. And they really ain't gonna put it on 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 camera because right. they're really gonna get it at right. home. They got family. Right. And I be getting it. You know what I'm saying? Like they right. don't play. Like they're really. I feel you. They, the values is like you know. Real strong. We're like I'm second generation here. Uh -huh. they, my parents cross the border. You know what I'm saying? From Mexico. Yeah. Okay. So like. That, you know, over there, the culture is a, a little bit more different. They're more, the, they're more strict. Mm -hmm. So if you do certain things, they're not gonna go for it right now. Right. I I really admire the way that they do have a sense of community yeah. that um, seems to be cohesive and supportive of one another. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, we stick together like glue. You see how many people live in one house? Yes, We're driving like, one car. Yeah, see, everybody. See, look, that's <laughs> like, see, so right there in there. I don't want to be tapped into no stereotypes because that's what got. Tiger into his trouble, but I'm glad you sitting right here with me and can acknowledge, you know, All together. my cousins live with me, bro. All my, when they cross the border, they all live with us first. That's a good plan, And then though. when they got on their feet, they left, one uh, by one. It's a great plan. Once again, Neighborhood yeah. Nip used to discuss yeah. how he would feel like the, um, the, the process is typically for us to raise our kids up to 18 and then start forcing them out the house. But... In his wisdom, he used to express how he thought it should be the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. Let's try to get them to stay as long as they can, not as being dependent upon us, but however, if the, even, even if they're getting the income, what is the value of them getting the income and spending it versus them getting it and being able to save it and save it and store it and then utilize it? Yeah. And that's the concept I think we need to be more 
unified, more together, more eager to keep our offspring close mm -hmm. and help them develop into something bigger before they go versus pushing them out there as soon as their wings yeah. can flap. Some people never want their parents' house. They just have their families there, like my sister. And nothing they bought wrong a with house that. together. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> she's so spoiled, bro. She's still spoiled. She's a baby. How old is she? My si my little sister, she's she's married with kids. She? See? But, I mean... She's 30, I, what, 30, 32, 33. My grandmother, she had four daughters and a son mm -hmm. and one of her daughters never married never really left the house mm -hmm. and in long term she was working she was a, a a successful lady but she was there in the home with her mother to take care of her into her she died at 100 years old and she had her daughter there with her the whole time yeah. versus an in-house nurse yes. a, anything of that nature so you know it's, it's two ways it wasn't because my auntie didn't stay home because she was dependent on the nest yeah. She stayed home for other reasons, and then in the long term, it was a benefit that she was there to take care of it. Yeah. So there's like, other ways you can look at it. You know, me, like me now, like my dad, he's he's home now. Mm. So I, I, well, you say that from, like, what do you mean? What does that mean? He's retired. Oh, okay, okay. So he, and then he's kind of a little sick, so. Mm, God bless him. You know, so I, I go, and now I, I go cook for Check him every in. day. Yeah, I go cook for him every day. When, when yeah. you say he retired, what was he doing your whole life? What kind of job, what kind of well, work did he do? When I was young, he had his like his own business then when we got older um he started working for access where he drives disabled people oh, okay and then he did that until he retired you know That's but he, his heart his heart's kind of messed up and salute the pops man yeah, we thank bro. you for going hard and raising such a uh respectable daughter no matter what she going through man salute to you yeah, man bro. oh god yeah i put him through the ringer <laughs> you did? i can imagine <laughs> yeah bro you know so you know he my... never switched on you huh nah. never changed up nah bro. You know, and that's why I go and do what I do for him, even though we're, he has four kids, bro. Out of all, out of four of them, somebody's going to do this. You know, that's why you have a lot of kids, that's bro. Spot. That's right. Because when you're older, they're going to take care of you. How many kids you got? I only got two. Two? That's good. That's a good story. How old are you? If you mind me asking. Oh, oh come oh, my on. Bad. Man. My bad. My <laughs> bad. Bad question. We'll scratch that one. Yeah, two ain't bad. You got boy and girl or boys or girls? A boy and a girl, oh, yeah, bro. Yeah, you got a good mix. Can you mind saying their ages? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my son. Look, like my son is seventeen and my daughter is nineteen. Okay, yeah, you ain't no baby. You you got a baby face, Lupe. God <laughs> damn! No wonder that was a bad question. My bad. Oh my, like, yeah, bro. So my but look, my daughter had that little that little uh, my grandson Isaac Mac. The one oh, you that, got a grandbaby too. Yeah, he's oh, yeah. You know that little boy that be with me in C Mac. How old videos? is he? He's three. Oh, your grandbaby older than mine. Shout out. What's his name? Isaac Mac. Shout out Isaac Mac. That's, that's Mac. Mac. That's a Mac. That's that's Mac. Yeah, he's a Mac. <laughs> Yeah, Mike. I said, uh, okay. see, Mike gave him that name. That's right. He, you haven't seen all the videos. I, I've seen, I've heard that name, but I can't really recall exactly where I heard it from, though. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, when we, when me and C Mike used to go uh, feed the poor every week. Yeah, eyes and the, 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 low, the we used to go to Skid Row. We used to take the baby. <laughs> that's a sense of safety, and security. <laughs> He used to be passing out the sodas and shit, bro. It was so cute. And that's just something C Mac from internally just wanted to do. Yeah. Get out there with the homeless. Yeah, it was just me, um, Isaac Mac, and C Mac. And then sometimes they'll bring one more, more and more person, but it was mostly us three. But that was his idea initially? Yeah. That's what's That up. was his idea at all the times. And then uh, he, he never wanted to get no donations. He paid it out of his pocket, whatever right. we bought. That's right. He didn't want no help. Like he paid for everything. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, man, you know, you you already, you know, people will give you money, donate money for you to. Nah, I'm good. Did it. I'm like, all right. Okay. He didn't want to, bro. But that was where him, like, from the money he was getting, like, pay, giving back. Right, right, you know what right, I'm right. No, I can, I can dig it. And it wasn't like, oh, I just wanted. No, he really did it from the bottom of his heart, bro. I've seen his name affiliated and associated with quite a few people from a manager position. Um, you, in a sense will get that type of reputation. The homie ODM Slim yeah. definitely has filled that position. Uh -huh. There's uh, another cat named Six on it. Uh -huh. Does he have official management at this point, or is that an open scenario, or is he riding with one of those individuals right now? I know he cool with ODM or whatever, but is yeah. that his official manager, or does he not have official management? I don't I don't even, you like, don't he's signed to a record label, and they have management team. Okay, which so, label is that? Uh, CME. Oh, CME. So I don't, um, he just tells me, he can you do this? Can you help me with that? And I just help him. So you, you're you doing managerial work, not even being officially a I don't, manager. I don't, want, I don't need that title. Right. You know, 
You're going to see it because you're going to be together when you see the things he's doing. That's right. So I don't even, I don't need no title. You're going to see me. That's right. You know, that's I don't right. need no title. That's, that's, it, that's what been, we've been going far. Why are you going to change the. Mm, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Mm -hmm. Y'all could dig that. So whatever he got going on with his uh, managers or whatever they got going on, that's, that's between them. Uh, you know, I don't got nothing. I don't have nothing wrong with ODM Slim. I don't have nothing wrong with. Hey, to the neighborhood, out yeah, the mud. Neighborhood, bro. You know what I'm saying? I don't have no problems with them. You know, they everybody's doing their thing. You know, right. he has his, his he got his YouTube channel. He's right. building and he's on Clubhouse. He's he has artists too. He's doing yes. He's doing a lot of things too. You know, right. everybody's busy. Right, and that's the know? key thing: stay busy, yeah. stay focused. I learned this some time back. When you're trying to be successful, you have to remind yourself this type of shit. Mm -hmm. When you um, go to the horse races, the motherfucking horses that's raced, they put blinders on them like this. Yeah. So yeah, they can't. tunnel vision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think about a laser. The laser is so effective because it's not a broad stream. It doesn't go. It's the most direct, concentrated. Focus. And you know what's so crazy about me and us, like 600, we all got the same friends hmm. so we're gonna eventually see each other as we're going through our right. you know right so, we, we might see each other the same show we might see, uh, events now, we're gonna see I, each other i'm not trying to strike up no controversy no bullshit but just from being generally aware it seemed like there was some ups and downs that didn't quite go right business wise with the 600 character that's the only reason i'm familiar with his name is because it went to the headlines fucking with mac and it seemed like it was bad business but, is, yeah. Was it really bad business or misunderstandings? It's a misunderstanding because Six Hundred doesn't really own the label. He's just he's just like A and R. Mm. So he's just basically like like how I was doing like just the driver and taking you here and there, taking you to your appointments if you need a ride and stuff like that. So basically, the money he has nothing to do with it. Mm. You know what? He's like a kind of like an employee type shit. That highlights the importance mm -hmm. of an artist having proper representation. Mm -hmm. I'm realizing from what you're explaining to me, what the homies experiencing. Mm -hmm. However, me personally, through my career, I've gone through the same exact thing. Um, the proper pro, uh, pr uh, representation, communicating on your behalf is essential when it comes to this business yeah, because things get real tricky. Yeah. yeah, And us as individuals and artists, we take things a lot more personal than biz business actually is. So once you have an interest from an opposite entity, it is to your benefit to get out of the, the comic conversation and negotiation immediately mm -hmm. because someone like him can deliver a message for me that I'm not even comfortable delivering because I like the person I'm negotiating with. And we know C-Mac love everybody. Mm -hmm. If you ain't, he love everybody. So if he communicate with you and he feel like you're trying to help him, it's cool. So with him being such a valuable personality, we got to get locked down with the right representation. Mm -hmm. I think the potential for the homie is limitless. I got I got a I got a number from from a lawyer already, you know. So that makes that's sense. entertainment. You need an entertainment lawyer. You got you got to, somebody got to read your your contracts or whatever. Yes. Whatever they're gonna give you, you know what I'm saying. So, you know, I try to explain it to to that to him, but you know. But the buffer is, you never want the no to be coming from you. C Mac mm -hmm. is an artist. I love everybody. Everybody that wants to do business with me, I want to do business with me too. I want to do it. Mm -hmm. Guess what? My manager overlooked it, and it's not the best thing for me. But I love you. Mm -hmm. That's the buffer he needs from everybody. You know, I I believe when he comes out, it's probably gonna it it, it can be fixed. It's, I'm it's, managing. Just it's, don't it's don't a, don't sign him away. <laughs> and he he coming him. out sometime next year. Yeah. I'll manage him if you keep him on ice, and he don't sign yeah. to nobody. I will sign to my management company. We are gonna take him to the top. But he's already signed to a to a company. So to, to, to what you said, CME. CME. Okay. Yeah. You know, so he can't go do nothing or not to. What's the term? Do you have a length of time on the terms? Five years. Oh wow, they got him. Mm-hmm. So like, how did they yeah. compensate for that amount of time? I don't know. Mm. Facts over feelings is the podcast, and the facts over whoever feels anything about it that does not sound like good terms. Like so. I, I, I just know it's been in the headlines for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you've been seeing it. Yeah, I've been, I've been like, seeing similar things, but I haven't really honed in on that. But that's interesting to know. I, I wasn't fully aware. That's why I was asking you the questions about his management situation because I haven't been actually been able to pinpoint where it was at this current moment. I know it's been through some changes. Mm. Yeah. So. When he comes out, he's, I don't know, he's going to continue doing the same thing he was doing before he went in, getting his own money, how he's been getting it. He really didn't need to sign to nobody because he was already getting the money, bro. <clears throat> you know? 
his his personality was is a lot larger than mm-hmm. anybody that I have heard he's been affiliated with. But mm-hmm. signing to someone who has his best interest in mind and that is um, strategically going to take it to the next level is not necessarily a bad idea. Yeah. But you got to be careful who you commit to because they have to be committed to taking you to the next level. And he has the potential to be doing a lot more than what you and me know how to do for him. I just feel like he 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 don't need, he can't be signed to no one. Because the way his character is, like I feel like he he he's a little stubborn. A lot stubborn. <laughs> he's a lot stubborn. So he he's a hard head. We can call him an official hard head. No one. I don't care who. He it can is. be signed to the right person, but it has to be the person that he respects to the point, and they have to have his best interest in mind. Because guess what? See, Mac, his his innocence that I can perceive. He come to you with that innocence, and if you deliver and take care of him. It's a wrap. It's yeah. locked in. However, if you if you give anyone the idea you can do more for them than you can, and then you disappoint them, yeah, he's gonna be he's not gonna be shy about expressing his disappointment. Yeah. I, I can imagine that, that. Yeah. So now I see what you're talking about. Yeah. So like if you, I feel like if you sign to somebody, make sure they they have weight behind them. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Just can't sign to. And C Mac has to realize he's developed enough of enough traction that he can't not he shouldn't or should not sign anything to anyone that is not guaranteeing him some type of benchmarks. Mm-hmm. If I'm gonna consider you or entertain you, you have to be telling me I'm gonna do this, that, and that. Mm-hmm. And if you cannot impress me with what you propose, C Mac is at the level to where I don't need to hear nothing you're talking about. Mm-hmm. He is literally one of the biggest names on the internet social media if you did a top 20 especially if you cut out a lot of the political non-black shit you go to entertainment and hip-hop his name is up there we know he got there by accident or by divine ordination it's not like he calculated and said oh i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that and figured it out he was just did himself and he's a sensation that is so easily packaged and marketed if you're dealing with the right people yeah, i just don't feel like we got the right people around us yeah yeah, you know? he's a, he's a big 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 fucking name. Yeah. You know him so well and love him so well. I, th- I don't think you realize who you be around sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that dude is a giant. On no. no accident, that dude is no. a giant. His personality is extremely large. Well, because I'm always with him every day. Yeah, and it's normal to you now. I mean, you know. Yeah, but he inspires. He he he's, he doesn't express to be an expert in nothing, but his genuineness mm-hmm. and his honesty inspires almost everyone who encounters him. Even though he's mm-hmm. pushing gangs that people think is bad, they overlook all that mm-hmm. because he's so genuine. Yeah, it takes he's him a, a good long guy, way. bro. That's why we could I could be with him every day, and we might get into argument here and there because you know we both we both stubborn. Right. You know what I'm saying? Of course, we're going to get into little arguments and right. stuff. And then he might do a video. <laughs> right. And then you'll be in the video. Or you'll I'm be, like, fuck. Yeah, you got, I'm going to tell you, y'all, y'all acting skills is man. not up to par because you did not catch him getting no head. You was not mad. I, I, I looked at that show. That like, was a skit at the I know, jumper. but y'all, it's see, a y'all skit. I'm just saying, though. Was y'all not trying to trick nobody? Y'all knew nobody was a fool. That was a skit. I knew it, but did y'all know everybody was going to know? That it was a skit, or did you try to make people think that that really was going down? I mean, what did you, what do you think it was, bro? Because <laughs> if you really catch your joint out of bounds doing that, you finna break some windows at least, right? I would have been on the other side, uh, and not on that. his side. If it was say real, less. I would have dragged somebody out the car. We'd be hollering free Lupe. <laughs> <laughs> Tires would have been popped, windows would have been smashed. That's right. First 48, I would have been on. No, I'm That's right. no, I could dig it. I could dig it. Do you see a better future for the black and brown overall in Los Angeles? Yeah, look, if we unite, you know how powerful we'll be. Like We're already powerful as it is. Say that again. They, yeah, they need to see us unite while we you say that. No, bro. Yeah. You gotta unite. We'll be more powerful. My partner Puto, Lupe, is an example. <laughs> <laughs> I should say Tarzan Rare Rest because she get too much tickled out of that. But these are two individuals that I am personally encountered and familiar with that are an example example of how you can love both sides without choosing sides, even when you choose a side. Because I know Lupe and I know my partner Tarzan Rare Rest. They love the black and the brown. Mm-hmm. And being affiliated with uh, Tarzan and his whole family, I've learned to love the brown to a level that I probably would have never been able to develop. And I see you have done the same for the opposite. So. Mm-hmm. I think we stand at the forefront. Yeah. We've heard the term black and brown, but we know it doesn't really link up and click up to the capacity as it should. But I think we at the forefront, yeah. the way you look out for the homie and the way he has that love for you and y'all love each other, that's a good example for that black and brown yeah. movement. 
Oh, my I mean, mama, I don't mama. see no colors. I mean, we 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 actually like every other oh, dynamic do it. You know, we're, I'm Mexican. He's black. You see, we we how we. It don't. It never. With each it other. don't matter. Yeah, it never. Yes, it's it's it not never even, matters. It's not even no. And I I feel like our cultures could like blend like that, and we we'll make agree. great things, bro. I agree. You know, because if you go to I've been to No Jumper, right, bro, and his whole like he has all the cultures in in one one room, bro. Mm-hmm. What do you and think about that? That's good. That means look look at how look at how you know what I, I've had some things to say about Adam's platform that were slightly um mm-hmm. I, they, I they would be corrective or I didn't appreciate, but what I've also often been clear about saying is I appreciate the way that the term culture versus culture vulture usually applies to non blacks that are benefiting off our culture, but I think he has gone out his way to extend his platform yeah, to allow to everyone, yeah, to actually establish and share from the wealth. So, once again, Adam, even though the bullshit I say I've seen you do, <laughs> I want to salute you for that, homie, because yeah, I think bro. it takes a big man to sit back and share that platform with and, and try to be very selective about the talent you choose amongst our people, too. So, I appreciate that. Yeah, I be, and like the staff that works there, is there all the cultures that just work together and make it make it but happen. But there, there should be caution with the gang energy that crosses path, the ops. Oh, yeah. We got to be very careful. Mm-hmm. One thing, while trying to facilitate a place where we you can help see us nurture and grow, you got to be careful not to facilitate an environment that's a time bomb where ops are all aware of the location and energy gets to a point where it gets out of your hand. That's one thing I want to make sure that we all do because a lot of these facilities that we recorded, even this one here, it's communal facilities. People are generally aware that this work goes on here. These people work together. And we just got to be careful about the paths we cross, the energy we entertain, the way we present ourselves. Yeah. yeah. You, know, and you always got to stay alert at all times. Wherever Indeed. you go anyways, you know what I'm saying? Head on a swivel. Yeah, you already know, bro. You I seen be- y'all in Subway. <laughs> was that really an op outside or no, what? No, that was C-Mac with the other person. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but we... we that was a she? It was, was a she. That girl, yeah. Oh. He, that's his, his, his... No titles, though. Don't act like no, you got an attitude. No, nah, it was oh. another girl, but that wasn't... I don't but know don't, act, don't get no attitude, no titles. <laughs> <laughs> it was another... A driver. A driver. Okay. You know, he'd be having drivers. Yeah, he a player. If I can't take him, he, he's going to find somebody he's comfortable with. Is it because he can't drive? And nobody he never... can't drive. You, you seen you seen his driving video? No, I haven't. I, have just, a... I, I just I just could assume that might be part of the issue. Just knowing yeah, he him. does he can't drive, so is you know is he interested he in drinks? learning? Huh? Or he just like he from the boss up? There's and say, a video Fuck that it. went viral when he tried to learn and it, it wasn't didn't, that it didn't go that good. No, <laughs> I could imagine it went just, numbers. I, I could imagine he stepped on the gas like. Pfft. Oh my god! Heavy bro. foot. Yeah. Heavy foot. You need to look at it. It went viral on his, his YouTube. You know, you know what we did on accident? We had an episode about C-Mac. That shows you the influence of his personality. Oh, yeah. We had a whole list of things that we plan on discussing. But this dedication, I'm going to just dedicate this episode to the homie because I'm proud of you because you've been through a lot. A lot of people got misconceptions about you. You ain't just the obvious winner in everybody's eyes, but you winning because keep your head up, chest out till you come home, neighborhood to the neighborhood. You fight me. <laughs> Shit, I don't like. Oh, bye, bye, oh bye. he's gonna be happy when I talk to him. And yeah, he let cut oh, know, cut let cut know. Let him know he in there with my uh, son-in-law too. Oh, okay. I already told him the name, so if he cross him, just let him know. Give him one of these for me. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm gonna tell him. Yeah. Well, I'm, well later you can give me your. your yeah, I give him the. Yeah, yeah I give the you the, name. You, the uh, you know, but he's he's uh, you know, hopefully they let him out soon because last time he went in there, I think he did like five months. I guarantee you this. With the sentence he got, as long as he don't catch no more time, he gonna get out sooner than we expect. Mm-hmm. No matter when it is, it's gonna blow by. Time moves so fast. We stay active. He'll be back out here. Yeah. Our job is when he get out here, we gotta keep him focused, keep him on the right path, keep him in a position where he ain't gotta keep encountering the law in this fashion. Yeah. Shout out Mozzie. I just heard Mozzie had to turn himself in for a western. Oh, yeah. You feel me? I got an open case right now for a Billy. So. It's kind of going around. You dig a lot. Is it your first one? Never. So uh. never. So, so, so never. So we just praying, hoping, and paying. Yeah. You, you got to pray yeah. and pay. Oh, my God. If you ain't paying, you might be staying. So we're going to cross our fingers and go for what we know. You know, yeah, that's what you got to do, you know. Oh, my, my. Anything you want to leave with the people? I feel like we got close to our time, have we? Almost. Before. Yeah, to give me something. On the black brown thing, being that you're from from the, uh, the Coast Guard, a lot of people perceived your area as being in a black brown beef. Other people perceived it as a gang gang beef. 
don't you speak on that a little bit? It's ironic that we're here discussing the conversation about black and brown unity and past problems. Be, and I'm putting all the like pressure on you <laughs> being affiliated with the opposite yeah. side. But the reason, one of the main reasons I feel comfortable discussing this on the public platform is because the street organization that I am affiliated with is notoriously known for having a, a decade, multi, multi-decade, couple decade long war with some a Latin gang and it, it kind of started if everybody kept it at Google because we we triggered it. We pulled a move that kind of started a war and it was over like millions of dollars of product and it lasted years, but very recent in recent times. Shout out to the homies from the set and that had the courage and the leadership to sit down with the F-13s. Mm. And so even outside of my personal relationships, like with my brother, my best friend, I am very familiar with, even when it comes to street politics, um, deaths on both sides, years of hate and murder and disrespect. I'm familiar with men being able and willing to sit down and squash all of that. Um, I don't know how familiar you are. Well, I know you are familiar with, you know, you might even have family from over there. What do you think about, do you think that's a good precedent or example for what can happen between the black and brown communities in general when you see what the East Coast is and the F-13s I mean, went through? Is that like a good blueprint for what is possible or you yeah, think? because, you know, you guys were going at it for years, bro, like, you know? And I think, you know what, I think people are so dedicated to what they represent that I think a lot of the leaders were not in the war with their heart for the issues no more. I think everybody could have been agreed that it should have been stopped. But once you push it aside and it's on, Look, it's now, on. Now you guys can make money together. There you go. But you know what's funny? <laughs> that you know the fucked up part about it? That's where it started. Mm. Making money together mm. and somebody making a decision to where that fucked it up. Making so now, money together. See, now, you, now you don't get back get to up it. again. I, I believe you know enough saying? time has passed to where yeah. those type of things can take place. You know, so it's just just moving forward and trying to make something happen, bro. Right, right. Have you ever been incarcerated? No, I've never been in. I've been, I only been, I got a DA reject, but I never, I've been, thank you. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> wow, 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 wow. that was going to open up a whole nother yeah. uh, set of con- questions, though. Yeah. Oh, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> you know, I've been, you know, the cops has always been involved. I know, but you, you know, you not only being a female, but being a female that's not black. Yeah, that's why I got, was able to slip away. That, that's what I was, that, <laughs> that's what I was about to say. You didn't even uh, know. Uh, uh, yeah, effectiveness. You that makes imagine. you. Yeah, I, yeah. I can. I, especially when your people like highly fill the ranks of the officers too. Mm-hmm. A little accent, a little da, 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 throw a whole situation another way when they're looking at their DI or they're looking at their knees or somebody that they respect in general. It's a difference. That's why I feel like community policing should represent the population. Because us as blacks, we've been realized when you got a whole bunch of police in your in- in environment that don't look like you, you're going to get fucked. There's a recent video right now where there's a female, I believe, it might be a dude, but they had a pistol that was out of control and a black officer responded and they shot him in the motherfucking leg, disarmed him, and the situation was over. And we know goddamn well had the officer not been black, he or she would have lost their life. Yeah. Oh, my, 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 my. So I believe that uh, if us as blacks and browns in our immediate environments can start finding a level of unity, then we can start representing that as one and then we can start moving out being more. Um, but I think that it's, it's very essential in the bottoms before we get to the top. We need it, bro. We really need yeah. it. We really need it because yeah. everybody else looks at us like we in last place. Although your people in general are on a rise that I've yet to see in like all my life, like the Latin movement in general is really getting a facelift and it's being pr- moved to the forefront of just the general society. Have you noticed that? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I also I also feel like if you know how we're we're going up now, we're getting stronger because we're now we're third generation Americans. You know, now we're we're being here longer. You know what I'm saying? So now, you know, our parents come in, they're getting factory jobs and stuff. They don't they don't know no English. So now the kids. They're picking up. They were willing to stand on the corner, sell oranges. They was willing yeah. to be at the motherfucking Home Depot. They was yeah. willing to do whatever it yeah. took. Like you say, occupy one household. And now you see that sacrifice is starting yeah. to pay out. Everybody to... gets houses, businesses, What? Cars. Now you see, in our black communities, every time something goes up for sale, it's replaced by Hispanic. Mm-hmm. And they do an upgrade. And it's like, you guys are creating an oasis 
that I can do nothing but salute. But you know what we also do? Um, a lot of Hispanic people buy houses together. <sighs> so it's not like it's they buy them together. You hear me, Lai Lai, Lil Lai Lai? Mm-hmm. We got to catch up, Lil Lai Lai. Yeah. That's the inside of my people, Lil Lai Lai. We are Lil Lai Lai. Lil Lai Lai, you hear her? Together, Lil Lai Lai. So that's what you see. It's not one family. It might be two. Mm. And then it's easier to pay the rent. And then, then from there, you, then you'll branch off and buy your own. You know? You know what? You, you're sharing something with me right there that I've seen from the outside looking in. And some people that I certainly love and politic with, we see that. But to hear you say it, yeah. it means so much, man. I, I, I Like I say, once again, I humbly admire your culture for being able to realize that's what needs to be done and doing it until we can get more space everybody wants extra space but i see y'all say by most part i can't afford it right now i'll get it later or this is the deepest part i may never get it but i'm gonna stay in this position so my son or my nephew or my, that's the deepest shit that's the part that i really admire it's about making decisions with my life that i'm not gonna benefit from but i believe my offspring and next generation can benefit from and that's the spirit i try to awaken in my people every opportunity i get and i just admire it in your people yeah they, the one thing about my dad he taught me to work hard hmm so mm. they all we all they t- click. everyone yeah so all all our all our the kids work hard. You know what I think? Without being too um, congratulatory, to your people, and then act like as if my people just don't get it. We was got our ass kicked and was forced to work hard for free yeah. for quite a. Long. We got our ass beat too. <laughs> you did, but not to the degree. No, 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 not with yeah, like four, in five the- hundred years. <laughs> they, they used to kick us in the ass and whip us with whips and make us work for free. Oh yeah, you talk about oh yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah. That but that's why. That's what yeah we got all our we got all our hard work kind of like that labor shit we yeah, kind of yeah. burnt out and I think genetically because the same way we can say yeah people work hard. Mm-hmm. Notice how stereotypes are offensive when they're negative. Yeah. So if I say your people are lazy, you get attitude. Yeah. But if I say your people work hard, mm-hmm. it's okay. But well, we got some lazy Mexicans. Bro. But that does not <laughs> it does not change the overall perception yeah. of what. Uh, Mexicans are you got you sure you got some lazy ones yeah, because but th- there's always people crossing over bro because they're but look but just think you know, about so that's it. the ones that are working super hard but if you're drowning who can give you applause for trying to survive like you're yeah. gonna if you're drowning you're gonna put all your effort in the, yeah. so if their actual economic conditions are that bad mm-hmm. and there's so much success that close I mean it's general survival Oh, Let's man. get there. Let's get there. It's right. It and plus, you're in Los Angeles, yeah. San Pedro, El Segundo. Yeah. It's y'all shit to start yeah. with, California. <laughs> it's y'all shit, Colorado. Yeah. It's all y'all shit. Yeah. So I can understand a desire to, nigga, let's go home. Mm-hmm. What the fuck going on over there? What y'all know about San Pedro and El Segundo? Yeah. It's y'all shit. So I understand. Yeah. Los Angeles. You know? That is not a fucking English word. That's a Latin word, correct? You know, well, I've been noticing too, like even the African American culture has been going up too. It just it needs to get more subtle. Yeah, more united. You know what I think? I I see that wave too, but I think we've gotten a far worse reputation as far as image than you yeah, guys. Yeah. You guys had got involved in the gang shit, but not to the recklessness in the public eye as we have. It seems like we as a culture has sold out our whole image to killing and hurting one another. And I think that is like kind of an image that's holding us back in public perception. And I know it's an issue. It's a problem that does exist. But I think that through time, it's going to work itself out. And we'll be able to highlight some of the progress that some of my um, that my culture is making. But I think that we're on so many different pages versus how it looks like your people at least are on one page. Oh, yeah. Even the people that are doing positive, like you hear the word like Black Lives Matter. Oh, of course they do. But then, even as a black person, when you start figuring out what the actual organization of Black Lives Matter represents and what everything that people are protesting, now you're conflicted with the phrase. Because I agree, I believe Black Lives Matter, but I personally don't want to be associated with the organization Black Lives Matter. So I just think that we're spread out on so many different angles. Mm-hmm. And when you think of Latin, you, you, just like you know, there's there's um, Venezuelan, oh, yeah. there's Puerto Rican, there, but you guys as Latins are so on the same page. You have to say the difference before somebody notices it. Mm-hmm. Most people will just think Mexicans. Oh no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody's yeah, Mexican. Be, yeah, because y'all, y'all function so fucking the same. Yeah, yeah. and that's it's admirable. And I just, I just I want mean, to continue to say it's admirable. admirable. It's, it's they're they're all third world countries, mm. so we all come from the struggle. 
You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know. You've been to like Mexico? Or yes, I've been to Oaxaca, Mexico. I had the I had the opportunity at ten years at tenth in the tenth grade. I went to a mission trip what? to Oaxaca, to Mexico. Mexico. To Oaxaca, not just Tijuana or it's not. I went to Oaxaca on a plane. What? And I helped build like a, a foundation. I laid help laid a cement foundation for a school in tenth grade. So um, I went well, to yeah. Tight. It was very culturally. Um, it's and rich, huh? oh what? And, and then that was tenth grade. A few years ago, I was able to go to Haiti, and that's a whole nother culture shock from a third world type. So you see, you see how when you come over here, it's like yeah, you're like in Disneyland. No, I, 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 no, this is what I was trying to tell you. I can understand the desire to get. I can get it. I get it. Bro. I get it. I get it. It's no no way. It's no way to compare the lifestyles. You know, I be doing lift right. So maybe people coming from other countries, and I'm like. They just love our country. I'm like, what you mean? <laughs> These guys from Netherlands, oh my God, it's so beautiful over here. I don't want to leave. I'm like, but you live in Netherlands. Like, right. it's and, beautiful and over we there. We want to go to Netherlands. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but it's not the same. I'm like, oh my it's God. It's not the same. It's not I mean, the same. People from other countries love United States, bro. And the cold part about it is one of my main things that I push is JITA. And JITA is an acronym for gratitude is the attitude. Mm -hmm. And it just reminds me, no matter what our plight is in America, how many things we would desire to change, mm -hmm. we have to remember to be grateful for the fact yeah. that we are here at the same yeah. time. Oh, my mama, mama. There is a lot of change that we can promote and invoke. However, it is imperative that we appreciate the freedoms, the leisures, yeah. and the luxuries that we have because everybody don't get them. Oh, no. And I think that's why we see a sense of so much appreciation from a culture that is coming from poverty. When they get here, they treat the ghetto like it's paradise yeah. because it is. Yeah. It is, and they appreciate it. We get here, and certain people, they feel like they take things for granted. But I just wish that um, in the long run, it would be less tension and more unity between the black and the brown. I, you know, I feel it too. That's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to do. Like, the, you know, they could see like how powerful we could be when you were like, yes. Well, how me and C might getting the numbers, you know? Yes. Or me and my artists, how we be getting our numbers, how we be doing things together, and, and it goes. You know what I'm saying? I think C Mac. All C Mac need is a. You know, he's not a writer. He's not really a rapper. He raps. Yeah. yeah. But he's such a big personality and character. When we get him the right record that could play yeah. on L.A. radio. Yeah. He's out of here. Yeah, something without uh, he Cussing, likes to talk dissing. about a big booty sitches. That's all he gotta do. That's, that's, that's all he gotta be about. Yeah. Big booty sitches. I got a song from way back called Ghetto Booty, <laughs> and uh, it'd be perfect for Cuz with, with the yeah yeah. Oh, blah, man. Blah, blah, blah. He'll be happy we do a song with him like that, bro. No, we're gonna do something because we was gonna do something a long time ago, and like I said, certain things caused it to be delayed. And Cuz' career and his experiences come full circle to the point where. Yeah, when he come home, we gonna do something. Oh, okay. We did something. Matter of fact, shout out to the homie Dre Five, Neighborhood to the Neighborhood, oh, yeah, Easy did. Shades. We did a record, I lit a verse, I shouted uh, the homie out, and he never, I even got the record right here. As a matter of fact, I say something, something like, see, hey, Matt. Dre, Dre Five is good. No, Dre Five is a very complete artist. Um, shout out to Dre Five, the homies Osama, the homie MB3, the homie P1, and Infant Asmo. I got a handful of homies from the set dot though that like got some potential and that's yeah. finna push so that Osama, I just uh he has a good song. Yeah, he on power right now. Shout oh, out yeah. to the homie Crash, yeah. Like nine music. seven. Yeah, bro. Evil mind all the time. I'm proud, I'm just extremely proud mm -hmm. for so long, um, when it comes to my section. I've been one of the only high profile people. Mm -hmm. And you would think that one would feel like, ah, here comes some more people and I'm going to take away from my shine. But I just appreciate the homies showing up on the scene and they're being like, um, exp um, representing themselves where to where they're being accepted outside of me. I love it. And when I say I was like the only high profile, I don't want to shit on the fact that my homie Wino, from one I know, had really like kind of like crossed over into the industry before me. But he was a producer and my homie Snoop. And the rest of the homies from the OG uh, days where they was game banging also had made a name for themselves off the true blue shit. But however, when it comes to modern times and, you know, more high profile, I have been out here alone. So after years coming, they see the little homies coming up, holding a candle, being contemporary. It feel real good. I just can't wait to see it all manifest. Yeah, bro. You know, it's like it's hard to get in the industry. If you're it's trying hard. to get an industry, it's, hard. it's very difficult to be accepted as one of the leaders or the greats or the forefronts. But if you're more humble and satisfied with just being in with the social media and some talent, 
and some business mind frame and some focus, it's a slightly easier to be considered in. Because before, you used to have to be yes. acknowledged and accepted by somebody famous. Yeah. Now, you can be effective and create yourself as somebody without anybody famous even being aware of you. Yeah. You know how many stars, like when Extension died? Mm -hmm. There was a lot of awareness that had to be had by older people to who he was. And he was already a household name with the youngsters. That's all I'm saying. C-Mac. How many famous people does he know? Don't consider me. I don't even call myself no, famous. He knows a lot, a couple. But before he became, he, he don't need, as much as he know him now, mm -hmm. he, that's not why he's C-Mac. Oh, no. You, that's my point. Yeah, yeah. He knows them because he's C-Mac yeah. versus. Well, he knows them now, but not before. Yeah, he's not C-Mac because he knows them. Yeah. He knows them because he's C-Mac. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. And I believe that's the energy that didn't always exist. You know what I think about C-Mac? Like, he... One thing about him, he knows how to, when how to use the internet. He knows how about. I don't it's know. It's okay it, to say maneuver or manipulate. Which, manipulate yeah, the which, internet. Yeah. I, I, like whatever I, word you was gonna use, it's okay. I don't. I don't know. That's what he's smart about, and like that's what he's super smart about. So whatever you know, when he be doing the skits and that, he knows how to maneuver it for him to get the numbers, and he's always staying viral. I don't want to knock the homie. I don't know I'm, what I'm it not, is. I'm not knocking his intelligence. I don't know what it is. I'm I don't, I don't know it. it. He I, knows I, it. I, he doesn't know it either. It's him. He All he is is himself, and what he mm. is is he's chosen. No. The nigga is special. Listen to me. I don't mean special like special. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's chosen, yeah, bro. He's chosen. He, he don't do nothing that amazing to make us figure out why it worked you think nah he's, i don't know what it is. he's chosen it's so cho we don't have to define it you don't have yeah. to describe it we might understand yeah. it better later on mm -hmm. but right now we just know he's unique he's mm -hmm. special he's different and we want to cherish him protect him because we know he's vulnerable in a lot of ways too yeah. he's trusting he's loving mm -hmm. and that's why i'm glad he has people such as yourself that's not going to just let him walk off a cliff yeah. it's easy to do out here especially somebody like him that's ready to go yeah you know and then you know we're always like close by with each other. I'm not too far away from him. That's good. To make sure he's straight. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna be so. You, I mean, he's gonna be getting some visits. On the uh, when he goes to the big yard, yeah. Probably I'm gonna, he want probably go see him. <sighs> he be calling almost every day. Well, you got it. When you go from how close y'all are, you can't go to a probably then. You gotta say for sure, for for sure, for sure. sure. <laughs> if I show, I'm going yeah, you know, up I'm gonna there. Go, you know, I'm gonna go up there. I'm trying to see That's where he's right. gonna be at, bro. You know, that's that's that's, right. that's my boy, bro. Like we that like, we're really close friends and you know, we've been together every day, bro, for a long time. I know what really made me interested in getting you here so fast, even though we was gonna do this regardless, was I saw a clip of you giving an update on his case and it's like you was holding back tears. <laughs> I was hot. I, said, I could tell. I said she need a what, neighborhood hug. Bro, man. Let me get a homegirl neighborhood on, hug. Man. They had me fucked up. I'm like, oh hell no. Yeah. When he, when, when he went to jail, I was. I had went to Mexico. I went to. Uh, I went to the strip clubs out there. It's called oh, yeah. HK. Okay. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna say that man. the strippers are not like the ones over it. here bro hoochies. they're, they're over the there it's well, different over there it's, it's different now so much fun no I got friends of mine that try to get me to go to Mexico you for don't wanna go to um, uh, I mean, not for, not not for that reason that everybody like to go. Right? That's <laughs> Look, not, bro, the guys are like, caught me a, some years later when I was younger, earlier. Yeah, I was like, you, if you want to take it to that room, a special room by yourself, you could take it. I'm like, I don't need to take it to an old for class. ten extra dollars uh, for forty five. <laughs> See, it's still that's t like yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm 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 too late. I should have got there first. I'm too late. Well, forty five dollars. <laughs> you know how many people got forty five dollars? The special treatment. You know how many people got forty five dollars? Out there or over here? Yeah, it, yeah, how many people have came through at 45? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. By the time you get there, that I'm cool. I pass. 45, yeah, it's a if lot of I was of the girls. first one with 45, it's different, but. Bro, that's all. When I mean, you're the five, six thousandth nigga with $45, yeah, I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. Not, I'm not. Would you put your dick, which you don't have, in a condom behind another nigga? So after a female then took so many 45s. It's just very. I just try. I went over there to try to get some content. No, you do you. You just took my mind. I, I know the main attraction why a lot of niggas shoot down there. Hey, but it's nice. I bet it is. It's, <laughs> I bet it is. 
It's, it's been, nice, bro. They have no, nice look, girls. In one of my there. coworkers, one of my friends, he just recently purchased some property on the beach in Mexico. Mm -hmm. So shout out AK. He come and go as he please. I actually have waterfront property on um, in Mexico. Where? Uh, is it Rosarita? Is it <gasps> I'm always going with my friends today. My, that's where I be going. I think it's Rosarita. Let me make yeah, sure. Rosarito. Let me make sure. Let me make sure. Let me make sure. Hold on. I'm going to try to call this cat right here live on the air. I'm putting myself on the spot, y'all. <sighs> and one of my friends that own a boat. It was good to have. He owned two boats. Yeah. I'll take you out there, bro. I know the. Back, I know how to get to like the back of my head. Yo. Hey, Kizzle. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm live on my podcast. Well, I'm not live, but I'm currently recording the podcast, and I'm, I'm talking to a Latina. <laughs> And I was letting her know that me and my partners, uh, my friends own property beachfront in Mexico, but I couldn't quite quote the city. Rosarito. That's oh, what I, shit. That's what I thought and, it was. Look, there's a strip club that we know the owner. Is that right? This, this dude on the phone been trying to get me to run down there yeah, with him for the we, last we, year. We, we could run, we could run uh, uh, slut tours. Say less. We're going to put it together. Hell yeah. All right. Say what up to me. <laughs> hey, hey, AK, me, Only Lupe. Only tour. <laughs> AK, me, Lupe. Hey, bro. bro. <laughs> It's my Paru partner, make, though. You make money, bro. Yes, sir, yes. Hey, do you want me to send you some pictures and stuff of it? Yeah, you can send me a few. Yeah, that'll work. And then we're going to yes. politic. Got you, sir. Say less. That's money right there. Uh, Run the little Adelita. Yeah. Rosarita, here we come. We're going to put together that player the tour. Player tour. I know about them tours. Mm-hmm. You know it's about that time, man. I sure appreciate you coming through. Uh, I re anything you want to say. Matter first, 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 first. I know you got a presence on social media. Yeah. I need you to let everybody know where they can catch up and keep up with you at. So my uh, my old Instagram got banned, so I got a new one, Lupe Gotti, 4600. And that's my IG. And then I got um, YouTube, Lupe 46. And it has a little TV icon on it. And um, on TikTok, uh, Lupe Fiasco, 4600. So uh, Facebook, well, now nah, my Facebook is for it's just for my family. But every other platform, you guys could like, follow me right there, you know? So I got to keep something to myself. And don't forget to do the Lupe. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do the Lupe, bro. I'm, I'm wow, all, wow, wow. Hit your Lupe. It's on all, on all platforms. And I'm working on a new song for C-Mac. Free C-Mac. Free the Mac. Free the Lope. The Cookie Monster. <laughs> the True Blue. <laughs> Nigga, that's all about them big booty, beautiful sitches. Big booty sitches in the oh, house. Oh, mama, 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 cuz. We got your cat till you get cat. <laughs> Neighborhood, bro. You already know what time it is, bro. I'm so happy to be right here with Spider Look. I've been wanting to, you know, I've been trying to connect with him since I first saw him, bro. But, you know, I, at first, I, you know, now that I'm getting more into the industry, now I know we could do more things together. You know, you never I, know. No, I appreciate that because I realized that you did have an interest in really connecting initially. And just based on a whole lot of things, there was nothing really direct that made sense for us to. I appreciate you. You know how hard it is to find somebody a year and a half later that feel the same way they felt the last time you met them? <laughs> so the fact that you're on the same exact thing, but you, like you say, you've been around more, and now we know how to talk about things that make more sense. We can continue to collab in the future. I appreciate your progress. I appreciate your position, and I definitely appreciate your support of the home because. Yeah, thank you so much. What's that? Thank you. Neighborhood, bro. Neighborhood. Chunk it up, Lupe. Girl, I be living down with all about the money. So what you gonna do when you ain't got no money? Your foreign cars and all the bitches, they gon' leave you.